Remember the other day we learned about a special insect? Yeah. Which insect did we start learning about? The ladybug. The ladybug, that's right. So the Draw Town Label is a strategy we use with our preschool children. It's a way of making informational text come alive for children in the classroom. I have some pictures here to remind us of what we learned about. So I'm gonna pass them out to you and you tell your friend what is the picture that you have? What is the picture that you have? And what do we see here? The wings. The wings, right? We see the elytra, and then we also see its transparent wings. The draw tone label is a strategy that's done over the course, possibly of two to three sittings. One of the ways in which we do that is by first reviewing the information that was taught on day one. And you can see that we use picture file cards. So it's just a second set of those photographs that were initially shared with the children on day one. So it's a matching game, but it's a way to get the children actively engaged and also deepen their comprehension around the content. Let's talk about some more of its characteristics. What else does it look like? So it has a head, eye, thorax, abdomen. That's right, it does have eyes. So let me go ahead and sketch these eyes. And you say with me, the ladybug has eyes. Let's say it together. The ladybug has eyes. So it's drawing first and foremost. And as the teacher is drawing the information, she's also narrating or telling information, modeling expressive language, vocabulary words that children will then need to have in order to discuss this particular insect. Six legs. So let me right here has six, that's the number six, and legs. Ooh. Ooh. Do you know what letter makes that sound? Ooh. L. L, that's right. So I'm gonna watch me write the letter L. Ooh, eggs. So it has six legs with young children, three and four year olds. A lot of visuals need to be part of this strategy. So it's using picture file cards, actual photos where children can see these images represented. What would they look like in real life? Bringing in realia whenever possible. So children can see what does this insect, what does this object look like in real life. They can get their hands on it, you can pass the photographs around, and children can just, you know, take their time to really look at it and analyze it and make those observations. Na, 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 butterfly and a ladybug have wings. Did you hear what he said? He said the ladybug and the butterfly both have wings. And the bumblebee. And the bumblebee too. The strategy is effective because it engages children in a different way that a read aloud would. The actual drawing of the image coming to life, children engaging in this kind of back and forth conversation with the teacher about the content, there are opportunities for them to ask questions, for the teacher to pose questions. So it's basically a conversation that's happening around the content that's being delivered. Who did we learn about last time? The ladybug. The ladybug, that's right. Say, we learned about the ladybug. ladybug. And what do you remember learning about the ladybug? Who wants to come up and tell me something that they learned? Okay, Sergio, you come up and point to our chart and tell me something that you learned. That's right, the ladybug has wings. Let's all say that together. The ladybug has wings. Coming back to the information is critical just because we know that children need multiple exposure to the content, to the language, in order to own it for themselves. So this allows that to occur where children are, are introduced to the content one day, but then they get to review or process it again a second day. And then it also provides more of an interactive opportunity for them where they're not just sitting as passive learners, but being able to interact with the chart, make it their own. So it's not just a strategy to be utilized one time, but it becomes an anchor truly in revisiting, reviewing, having the children take ownership of the learning that's occurred in the classroom. So here's what we're going to do. Look at what I have right next to this. This is a graphic organizer. It's just a tool that's gonna help our brains process the information one more time. So at the top here, I have, it says insect. Say that with me. 
insect. This is a long word. Oh my goodness, so many letters in this word. It says characteristics. Can we say that together? Characteristics. Let's say it to the ceiling. Characteristics. Let's say it to the floor. Characteristics. Let's say it to the ladybug. Characteristics. Throughout the Draw Town label, one of the main ways in which we can have children just have that opportunity to practice using the language is their core response. The say it with me multiple times could be say it to the ceiling, say it to your partner, engaging them in those think pair shares, thinking through ahead of time what are the prompts, what are the questions that you will be asking the children so that it actually facilitates that language, it elicits the language from the children. You have the first stage of the life cycle. The first stage, please come up and put it on our chart. Say, I have the eggs. Perfect. And go ahead and place it right here under the life cycle. Okay, what stage is that? The eggs. The eggs. The more children engage in conversations, the more opportunities they have to hear the language, but also to utilize it in an authentic setting allows them just to have that practice, that opportunity to make the content, have a deeper understanding of what they're learning. So the first stage is the eggs. The second stage is the larva. The third stage is the pupa. Which one? The pupa. 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 Let's say it together. Pupa. And the fourth stage is? Ladybug. The adult ladybug. Excellent. Give yourselves a round of applause. We really worked hard today.